Okay, welcome to this video 2.4. Guys, uh, decimal place and rounding. And our learning goal for this one is that students are able to use fractions, decimals, and percentages, and their equivalences, okay? Now, at the end of this one, you will want to be able to understand the place value of decimal digits, compare the value of some decimal numbers, round the number to a given decimal place, and communicate recurring decimal places. Okay, let's have a look at this. Naming some nomen nomenclature. Okay. So, uh, let's get our decimal numbers up. Okay, so let's just make one up. 53.761. Okay, now, when we're looking at this number here, okay, I want you to remember that uh, this thing here, I want this to be called, and well, it is called, this is our decimal, decimal point. Okay, not decimal place, it's the decimal point, okay? These things here, this is this is a decimal place, okay? It's a place in the decimal system, okay? Uh, but when we're talking about decimal places, we're really meaning the ones that come after the decimal point, okay? So be very careful that you don't call this thing here, this, a decimal place, because it is a decimal point, okay? Now, in our decimal places, we have different place values, okay? So this one here, this first column here, this is our tenths, okay? And so this number here corresponds to uh, 7 times 1 over 10, okay? 7 tenths. Okay, this next one here, this is our hundredths. And that would be 6 times 1 over 100. And this last one, a bit squiggly there, this is our thousandths. And that would be 1 times 1 over 1,000. Okay, so that's our different names. Obviously, it keeps going down at 10 thousandths, 100 thousandths millionths, etc. Okay, but um, we probably won't be necessarily referring to those by name. Okay, the main ones you want to know is tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Okay, and be able to understand what they mean, where they are, uh, and obviously call them the right thing. Okay, a couple of key ideas for us to think about. Okay, we can compare the value of two decimal numbers. All right, so let's have a look at this one here. The main thing we want to think about is the position of the decimal point. Okay, so if I put the right, look at these two numbers, now let's forget about the fact that these are pretty easy ones to compare, but let's have a look at, we, we write them, so 5.2345, and the other one is 10.34, okay? As we can see, this number has a number in the tens column and it in the tens place, and this doesn't. So that means that this one here is automatically bigger, okay? So as we come in this, this side, whichever, if this top one doesn't have any, further left as well, it, we, we know that this one's going to be larger, okay? We don't have to worry about the decimal uh, places, okay? But, however, let's look at this one here, all right? This one here, they're both of the whole part of the number are, are five, okay? So we have 5.173 and 5.173. 0731. Okay, now you need to be careful here because both of them have five as their whole part. Okay, now this one here has more decimal places, but what we do is we sort of have a look at sort of as we go further right, we see which ones are bigger. Okay, so as we go to this, this next rightmost uh, place value. This number has a 1 and this number has a 0. So straight away, we know that this one is bigger, okay? Because as we go to the right, we sort of find as soon as one of them becomes larger than the other, okay? This next one here, 0 0.47239, 0 0.4731, okay? Again, those are the same. Zero and zero. Next one down. Four and four are the same. Seven, seven are the same. Two and three. Boom. Three is larger than two, so that means this one is the largest. Okay. Three point five and three point five one. So three point five, three point five one, 
As we move down, three and three, there's a decimal point, five and five. Ah, uh, space, well, zero is the same as the space. Between zero and one, one's larger, bang, there we go, okay? All right, we can provide an estimate for a number by rounding it. Now, rounding values and being able to do that quickly, concisely, and easily for everybody is a very important skill because, for instance, I wouldn't want to report exactly how many millimeters there were from maybe my house to school or even how many millimeters or micrometers tall you are, okay? Because uh, this sort of gets to a point where it either doesn't matter anymore or people don't need to have that level of accuracy, okay? And so what you do is you round that number, you approximate, you estimate that number to a much more easy to deal with uh, place value, okay? So let's have a look here. What this means is that this is asking you or essentially saying round uh, 4.675 to two decimal places. Okay, so usually when you see that, that means saying round this part here to this many decimal places. Okay, right, how are we going to do that? Okay, so let's write our number 4.675. Okay, now if we want two decimal places, what that means is that we are going to cut here. So the number is going to end up being broken up here. Okay, so we're not going to have any more numbers after it when we're finished, okay? But we need to be careful about what we do then to this number here, okay? So we call this number here, this is our critical value. Might call it a critical digit. Okay, so a couple of cases for us to consider. All right, so if if the critical digit is uh, greater than or equal to five, then add one. Add one to the preceding digit. Okay, so in this case, uh, five, the critical digit, is greater than or equal to five, and so that means we add one to the next digit up, the preceding digit, and then cut it off, or we'll cut the, the number where we're supposed to. Okay, so remember that we use our is approximately equal to sign, and so that would be 4.67 plus one is eight. Okay, so that means that 4.675 is approximately 4.68. Okay, all right, it's the next one that shows us the other case that we need to be careful of. Okay, and that would be if we had the number 0 0.3249823, we're going to round to two decimal places again, it means we're going to break it here. Okay, now we have a look at our critical digit. Okay, now here's our other case. If The critical digit is less than five. I've written my greater than less than symbols incorrectly. That'll teach me for not having other numbers in there. If the critical digit is greater than or equal to five, that's that way. If the critical digit is less than five. Okay, sorry about that. If it's less than five, simply truncate the number okay truncate means just chop it there okay so we've got that number there and we're just going to truncate it which means just chop it off where we want to round to so that will be approximately equal to 0 0.32 now importantly it doesn't matter that there is a 9 or an 8 here all we're concerned about is this 4 okay all right let's have a look at the last couple of examples so we're going to round this one off to three decimal places 0 0.94832. I'm going to round that to three decimal places. So it's going to be chopped there. Have a look at this number. That's case two. So it's less than five. So we're just going to chop the number off at our line and we'll end up with 0 0.948. Okay. 
last one, 5.45295, round this to four decimal places, okay? So here's like a, a case one, but with a difference, okay? But look at that number here, it's a five. So that means we're gonna be adding one to this number here uh, before, uh, when we cut it off, okay? But that nine plus one is 10. So that means you end up adding another one to this one here, okay? So this will now be approximately equal to 5.453 and we'll put a zero here to show that we're rounding that out off to four decimal places, okay? So you might have seen a lot of this kind of thing before. Maybe you're sort of super expert at it, but I hope you've sort of seen those two cases, showed you a couple of special issues that can come up uh, in there. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that video and please come and see me if there was anything that you had any issues with, okay? Thanks.